Hey everybody, welcome back. We have a super interesting tutorial today. I'm gonna to be trying to make a core shell nanowire. A lot of people have been asking me about doing this. Um, and I think a good place to start would be a simple case for a core shell nanowire. Uh, people have also been asking for core shell quantum dots. Those are even more tricky. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll set the stage for core shell structures. Um, so I have a very simple case of a palladium core and a platinum shell for a palladium platinum nanowire. I believe I've seen this in the literature. Um, I, you know, if it's, if it's reversed, if it's a palladium shell, platinum core, you can just follow this procedure and do that easily. The reason why this is such a simple case is because, um, the original unit cells of the palladium and platinum are so similar, but in principle, you would use this procedure or you could use this procedure to make a more complex structure, which we will do in future videos. Uh, so if you have not subscribed yet, please uh, hit the subscribe button so you can be first in line to get that. Also, uh, what we end up with, the final product, it will not be a completed, a completed product. So if you wanna complete the product, you need to reach the end of this video and then use that structure in a simulated annealing procedure basically where you heat up the system using uh, thermostat, thermostated molecular dynamics, and you need to really anneal the, the shell onto the, onto the core. Okay, so you cannot use this structure that we finish with directly in your calculations. Okay, it will not be accurate. Okay, so what we do is we're gonna make a platinum shell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna expand this four by four by four, okay? So it's going to be, uh, pretty serious. So I'll show you in the boundary method what, what it will look like at first. So, and really what our target is, is we want to basically isolate uh, this these core atoms here, and we're basically going to insert a palladium unit cell into them. And now obviously this leaves three atoms thick. If you don't want to have it three atoms thick, maybe let's try three by three. In that case, you could probably have a two atoms thick. I, th I think this is actually what we'll do uh, for this for this you know video. Uh, so what we'll do. By the way, this is sort of an on-the-fly video, so uh, bear with me if I make some mistakes. Let's hit transform, and we'll do it three by three by three. Select OK. Yes. OK. Apply. Oops. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I have to go. I have to turn off the boundary. So one by one. OK. Then we'll hit transform. Three by three by three, select OK, apply. Why is it doing this? One by one, apply. Okay, there we go. Oh my gosh, okay. So here is our three by three by three platinum crystal. Uh, select OK. Now we need to do, it keeps going back to this, so just go back to boundary, one by one by one, apply, okay. What we need to do is save this, and we need to save two files. We need to save a VASP file to be used in the future when we insert the palladium, and we need to save a platinum XYZ, because that's what we're gonna cut, okay? So what we'll do is go to File, Export Data, and let's first save the XYZ. So we'll do a platinum cubic 333.xyz, now 3x, 3x3. So select Save. Uh, do not save hidden atoms. Then what we're gonna do is also save this as a VASP. We'll go to export data, and we're gonna call this um, platinum palladium nanowire dot VASP. Okay, so we're gonna use this towards the end of the video. So go ahead uh, and press save, Cartesian coordinates. Okay, leave this open, press control O, and let's open up our platinum crystal. Now you don't need to keep opening up all these files, but I like to have sequential tabs open sometimes, especially on new projects. So go ahead and hit A. This is very important. Okay, so we want this A dimension to be what, what we're going to be uh, periodic in. Okay, so then what we do is we're gonna basically cut out this center. And this is going to be where we're gonna place our palladium. Now, towards the end of the video, you might notice that we didn't have to cut this out. We could have just replaced all of these atoms with palladium. Why? Because the unit cells are so similar. But when you have a different case, uh, you're gonna wanna manually insert in that unit cell. 
and you can't just you know go ahead and replace. So that's why from the get-go, I wanna show everybody how to do it without just simply replacing. But in this unique case, you could just replace it because the unit cells are basically identical. I think they have less than 1% lattice mismatch. Okay, so now we just go ahead and we're gonna export this and we're gonna call it Platinum Shell. And this will be as an XYZ. So press save. Do not save the hidden atoms. Okay, let's go ahead and open that up just to be official. And I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna press Control Z. So let's go back to where we were. We made a platinum supercell three by three by three by expanding it. We then cut a hole in it. And then here we have that hole. So we need to press A again. There's our hole. Now let's insert in the palladium, okay? So go to edit, edit data, unit cell. <coughs> and we're gonna go to phase. We're gonna go to import. And now we're gonna import palladium cubic.vasp. Press open and apply. Now it, it, it superimposed the atoms. So now we need to shift it. So what we'll do is we'll go to, so just to let you know, these are the, this is the axis for the platinum. This is the axis for the palladium. E either one of the two, I don't know, but, but they're the same, so it's fine. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift it in the B dimension by you know some amount, let's test it. So A, B, C. Let's go here and do five, press apply. So it's a little too much, let's do three. It's too little, let's do four. Perfect. Now let's go up. So it's probably going to be four as well. Okay, perfect. Now you can see our palladium crystal inside. Now what we need to do is extend this by three in this dimension here going across. So we will go to unit cell, make sure you're on the palladium phase up here. Transform, three, one, 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 select okay. Yes, okay, apply. Okay, beautiful. Now select okay. So you see what I mean, in this case, you could have just replaced all the platinums in here with palladium because the unit cells are so similar. But let's say you had, you know, a different unit cell. It was like a different phase. It was like, you know, this like hexagonal unit cell or, you know, it was a different physical unit cell. You'd still would wanna place it in here, okay? Now let's go to properties. So, so you know, if, if this were any different system, you could not just replace the atoms. So that's why I'm showing you this method. Uh, so let's go to atoms, palladium. Let's make it a very rich purple. Okay, select okay. Okay, so beautiful. There's basically our core shell structure. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this, export data, and we're gonna call it platinum palladium nanowire. I'm gonna save it as XYZ. So save, do not save hidden atoms. Now let's go to our text editor, okay. Now we go to platinum palladium nanowire.xyz. We have 172 atoms, so you can see it's very expensive. Um, let's copy these all. Okay, we'll go into that VASP we originally saved, and we are going to paste it. Okay, now we have to count our atoms. So let's go ahead and just rename the file now. Is, uh, so when I rename it here, this is the name that shows up in here, okay, it's the title of it. So let's rename the title, uh, platinum, this is the palladium nanowire. And let's go ahead and insert a slot for palladium atoms. And let's count our platinum. So we start at index nine and we end with 148. So we'll pull out our trusty calculator and do 148 minus nine plus one. We have 140 platinum atoms. Okay, now let's go to palladium. So it basically searches for the first 140 and assumes they are platinum. Now let's do the same for palladium. 149, 180. 32. So we have 32 palladium. Okay, 
Now, remember we had expanded, uh, we, had, we had decided to keep periodicity in the A dimension. So I'm gonna go ahead and add 15 angstroms of vacuum. So you can tell this, this is just a very, very, very expensive calculation, but you know, it is what it is. So let's save this. And now let's open up, cross fingers that this works. Okay, Vesta does the awesome job of coloring palladium and platinum exactly the same. So let's go to properties, Adam. Let's go to palladium and make it that very rich purple that I like. Ooh, there it is, very nice. Okay, and basically there it is. Now, here's the thing I was saying in the beginning. Is this the final product? The answer is no. You would need to heat this system up to 300 degrees or whatever your target temperature is, maybe 100 degrees, 200 degrees, 500 degrees. And then what you'll see is the core will start to change the, the, the shell will start to change and they'll start to you know bond to each other and find their preferential uh, configuration. But as it sits right now, this is probably not the true structure. This is just a crystalline model, okay? So let's go ahead and expand this. Uh, we'll do in the A dimension, let's do it three. Okay, very nice. And let's set up the picture for the thumbnail. So basically there it is. There is your core shell uh, nanowire platinum palladium. This is not the final product. You would, and I cannot stress that enough, you would either need to do geometry relaxation or simulated annealing. Um, but anyways, this is how you even get to that point. So uh, thank you very much for your time and um, take care everyone.